So Alex, thank you for joining us today. I'm glad to be here, Victor. Yeah, so look, um, I know you and I have worked together a few years in the past, and I'm really happy to have you here to learn more about you. And speaking of learning about you, um, a couple months ago was the first time I learned that you actually got your start in IT. How has that influenced your role in RGM or revenue growth management? Oh, it's been very influential, and it's really helped me uh, deliver the right tools to support our RGM processes. Um, from that experience, it, it really helped validate the choice of Anaplan to be you know, the tool that we use for our revenue planning and for our trade promotion management. It's decades of experience of trying to put in off-the-shelf systems that our users really didn't want to adopt. Anaplan's been a different story. Um, we've been able to create tools that work the way our people do with the terms that our people use. Uh, so it's really helped drive adoption, as well as we've been able to deliver in a really agile fashion, which is not, you know, a lot of people say agile, but it's not really what happens. But with Anaplan, we've been able to do that really successfully. We go through sprints every two weeks. We can show working software. We get feedback from our user base and incorporate that feedback in that true agile fashion. And we're really delivering tools that our users are excited to use. Oh, that sounds great. So, Alex, as Coca-Cola's North America director of RGM. Why don't you start by filling us in on the role that revenue growth management plays in your company's overall business strategy? Oh, great question. Uh, revenue growth management, you know, it, it may be a more of a CPG centric term, but it's, it's really uh, a key pillar for us about how we're going to go about our growth strategy here in North America. And uh, revenue growth management in a simple terms, it's being able to sell more, to more, for more. So it's really about meeting consumer needs in the market. We've got to find the right uh, packages and configurations that make sense for our users, deliver it for the right uh, beverage drinking occasions at the right price points that really maximize the value for our consumers and for our bottling partners and for us. Now that makes perfect sense. In fact, it reminds me of a conversation I had with someone regarding supply chain, which is about producing the right product at the right time, at the right place, shipping it to the right place, from the right production location. So a lot of synergy there. And I'm sure that the COVID pandemic must have added even more complexity to the equation. Oh, for sure. Um, I'm sure like with everyone, it, it's made changes in everything uh, to our businesses, to the way we work. You know, I'm talking to you from my home office right now. Um, it's, it was a huge impact for us um, trying to figure out what was the base year that we were trying to plan against. When we make plans for our revenue with our bottling partners, it's a very intricate, coordinated plan with 67 bottling partners, you know, hundreds of customers, hundreds and hundreds of products that we all have to align on that strategy of how we're going to you know, maximize revenue for the company. Um, it was really challenging because we planned what is next year in relation to this year. But in 2020, nobody knew what this year was. Things are moving like crazy. Uh, some markets going very high, some going very low. Um, it was really unstable ground to try to build a business plan off of. But with the Anaplan tools we had put in place, we were able to quickly pivot. We had decided to build revenue plans based off a more stable 2019, but have our pricing related to the numbers that are actually in the market in 2020. So being able to be that flexible and alternate how we planned our base was really, was really a huge driver of building a successful business plan for us. And we wouldn't have been able to do it in our old tools. It would have taken months of custom development, but in plan, we turned it around in a couple of weeks. No, that's great, Alex. And I can imagine that everything you just explained regarding the pandemic period being complex, but overall, I would imagine there was some complexity prior to the pandemic. So what did Coca-Cola's pre plan process look like? That was, that was very much extreme complexity. Um, I think it's the dirty secret of most, most of the Fortune 500 that a lot of enterprises still really run off Excel spreadsheets. You know, when people were running billions and billions of dollars through these spreadsheets, and in our case, a $20 billion revenue plan running through spreadsheets. So you would have people with our bottling partners tossing Excel spreadsheets over the fence saying, oh, here's my numbers. And then we'd say, wait, is this the right version? And they'd say, wait, did we incorporate your latest feedback into our version? And it was just mass confusion, a lot of work, a lot of people working late nights and weekends trying to stitch everything together. So um, Anaplan's been a game changer for us in getting that one central place 
where everything's organized in, in one coordinated platform. So Alex, how did that work out between Coca-Cola and your bottling partners leveraging Excel, throwing, you know, spreadsheets back and forth? Well, I think we all felt like we were, uh, I don't know, on third in that case, right? It was a lot of confusion, um, a lot of um, misalignment, you know, and what's, what's been great about using a tool like Anaplan is we're able to build a system that people can really collaborate together on. So we have our, you know, our national customers, you know, that cross the entire U.S., and then we have bottling partners in different geographies. And so aligning on one common plan between the groups was always a challenge when you're tossing things over the fence. But with Anaplan, now we can share each other's perspective in real time, and people can see what each other are thinking and really come together and align on one revenue plan that makes the most sense. Yeah, so in, in my 26 years with Coke, I used to say it's hard to get two bottlers to agree on anything. <laughs> so I'm really amazed the fact that you have the opportunity to collaborate with them. And tell me a little bit more about how did that actually change the situation in terms of collaboration um, after you implemented the Anaplan platform? Oh, it's been huge. It's, that's been the, the greatest feedback we've had from everyone involved in the, in the planning process was the ability to see another person's perspective in real time has been huge for them. It saved so much time as opposed to waiting for certain dates and timelines where things were going to be tossed over the fence in order just to keep the version straight. Now people could work together on their own time and schedule and come to an alignment much faster. Got it. So Alex, I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but I've been a basketball coach for a long time. And one of the metaphors I would use would be with my teams, put it where the goats can get it in terms of being simple, you know, not making it so difficult to have people get to what they need in order to do their jobs. So I know that you don't have goats at Coca-Cola, but what I'm getting at is how do you think Anaplan helps Coca-Cola get the data that people need in order to plan effectively? Oh, I, I think it's a huge factor. In fact, the system we're implementing now is replacing our old trade promotion management system. Um, and we're replacing it with Anaplan and putting all of our bottoms up customer planning data in one place um, that where everybody can access it. Before the bottoms up planning was really maintained in a lot of different uh, spreadsheets and individual silos. But now we can pull it all together, provide it to our bottling partners in one place, provide it to downstream processes that need that data, and provide it to our trade promotion optimization group who relies on quality data to be able to make insights that really drive revenue growth in the market. Alex, will you walk us through the evolution of Anaplan and Coca-Cola in your space from the perspective of revenue growth management, trade promotion management, and trade promotion optimization? Yeah, it's, it's probably a typical story for how Anaplan can grow once people see the value uh, deployed in one process. You know, our initial process with that revenue alignment uh, and that planning that we talked about with our bottling system. So building upon that success, people realized instead of calling it this, this top line alignment, how about the bottoms up process? And the bottoms up process featured a core group of users who are very, very busy because they were maintaining in all this data in four separate systems. They were maintaining in the legacy TPM system. They were maintaining in their own personal spreadsheets. They were maintaining our own separate pricing upload spreadsheets. And they're also maintaining you know, tools to, to provide it for our planning purposes in Anaplan. We realized we could put this all in one spot in Anaplan. The data was 75 to 85% the same. Put it in once, let it be supplemented where it needs to be supplemented and go to the right partners and processes in the downstream areas. It's been huge. And now that we're laying this groundwork and I'm in the midst of deploying it right now, I've already got a laundry list of further processes and further partners, further routes to market that all wanna be part of the action. I can see that Anaplan has made a real difference in the way your RGM team at Coca-Cola works with your trading partners. Do you feel your success story is starting to gain attention in other parts of the Coca-Cola company? Oh, for sure. Um, I often say I feel like I'm the most popular guy at the dance. Um, we've got all these, uh, all these people who are seeing the success and seeing the value in the tools that we bring. That I can't keep up with the list of people, whether it's an adjacent process a downstream process or upstream process that wants to be connected, or people who just want us to build tools and solutions for them because they see the value. No, that's excellent. And you use a really key term, being connected. So it certainly looks like you've had a lot of success 
But now that you've had so much success deploying this alignment tool, what comes next? Well, we are in the midst of deploying that uh, TPM replacement. So um, that's going live as we speak. In fact, uh, as soon as we're done with this interview, I'm going to get back into the, the, the heat of the action there. But, um, but yeah, with the, next, the next steps for us are building uh, to the upstream and downstream financial processes. We can remove thousands of hours of redundant work where people are just keying in the data into other tools. Um, we also have different routes to market. Um, so there's different areas of the Coca-Cola company that people see what we're doing and saying, hey, we need to bring that to our area as well. So lots of things lined up and uh, ready to get started in 2022 with that. Excellent. So Alex, look, I really appreciate you spending some time with us today. I know you've got a lot to do. You just referenced the fact that you've got to get right back into it with your project. Mm -hmm. So I really want to just, you know, wish you all the best with the continuing work and thank you for being a customer of Anaplan. All right, thank you. Victor, first of all, it is so great to be like with you. We are actually next to each other physically. For the first time. For the first time, yep. We've, we've had the pleasure of working together for 20, 20 months, maybe 24 months. Mm -hmm. This is fantastic. I agree. So um, that interview was, was fantastic with Coke. And I was wondering, what was one of the most surprising things that Alex shared with you during the interview? The most surprising thing was the fact that he's been in IT. I didn't know that about Alex. We only worked together for about three years when I was at Coke, but when he explained why he chose Anaplan for revenue growth management and he brought in that IT background, that was actually surprising because during the digital transformation I led, you've heard about it a lot, most of the time and energy that I had to invest in that was to help IT understand the business, help them understand the pains we're trying to solve, to bring them along so that we could push the transformation. Right, I think you're really seeing a confluence between IT and finance, and, mm -hmm. and with the explosion of technology and the capabilities, really finance professionals, they, they have a responsibility to upgrade you know, their data literacy, right. their data fluency, Absolutely. and equally IT people, I think, are, are very interested in getting involved with the business and yes. learning the business yes. so they can ideate and, and create value, so right. that's, those, that's fantastic. Yeah, those lines are blurring, but you know, when I, when I started with the team I led in my last two years at Coke, I had um, the, 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 the champion of the project or the, the project lead, the project lead had been on the same team for 22 years. Oh, wow. My FP&A director had been on the same team for 11 years. My head of Europe had been on the same team, same jobs for eight years. What I'm saying is we had a lot of people who had been doing the same type work for a very long time, powered by Excel mostly, and did not actually see that there could or should be a different way. That digital fluency comment you made really caught many of them by surprise that they had to do that. Right, you know, I, 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 I had a long career with Verizon and I often was involved in projects that involved some type of transformation or integration. And in my head, one of my first, you know, my, one of my first plays that I would run yes. was who's gonna be in charge of my IT? Yes. And then I would make sure that they understood that I, I was going to be their best friend. Right. And what I, their experience along the journey was really important to me. Mm -hmm. And so, I, you know, I did, was it chocolate? Was it wine? What was it going to be that was going to help us really? <laughs> exactly, <done? laughs> exactly. Um, so with its scope and scale, Coca-Cola seems like the ideal candidate for the mm -hmm. Anaplan platform. What are the lessons some uh, other large companies can learn, can, can learn from the Coke journey? The number one lesson I can think of is you need a champion. Now, in my experience, champions are not appointed. You're lucky if you have one. I feel like myself, Alex, and another leader in supply chain, Sarah Park, we were all, I would call, serial edge pushers, always looking to push our teams, the areas we're responsible for, beyond what we're normally comfortable doing, and it was not necessarily within the DNA of this large company I worked for to change fast. So you need a champion that's willing to step out there, someone that's going to show the way. And 
one of the things that Alex said to me that I love the most, he's now the most popular person at the mm -hmm. dance. Everyone's coming to him, asking him, hey, can we tap into this data hub that you're using? I think we're using the same data, except we're rekeying re it all the time. So. I think, you know, I've, I've gotten to see you in action. I've met Sarah. I think, I think what I, I see in leaders like you and Sarah is also that ability to bring the team with you, mm -hmm. to communicate the story, the, why it's going to create value, mm -hmm. and make sure that they, are, they feel included in right. the journey. Right, absolutely. I had a, um, the person that hired me in the final role that I had at Coca-Cola, he and I um, spoke often about this change that I wanted to do. And frankly, he didn't understand what platform was or anything, but he trusted me. And, but he always spoke in threes. If he had, a, if he had a, a problem to solve or something to explain, hey, Victor, there's three things. I use that with my team. I said, the change that we're about to make it's going to impact you and your talent. I want to make you feel that you're more valuable outside the Coca-Cola company because you'll be more valuable inside the Coca-Cola company. It will impact our team. We will be delivering against the goals and objectives in line with the company strategy. And it will impact the company. And in our case, we actually happen to have worked for the flagship customer in the, in the entire Coca-Cola company. And we were very close to the sun. My direct manager reported to the CEO of the Coca-Cola company. So I was able to leverage those three things to inspire my team to see when we do this really well, everyone will know about it because we operated in 105 countries just with our account team. Wow. Wow. That's a lot. So, um, you know, what do you think that was the most important takeaway from the Coca-Cola story? I would say the number one takeaway is being able to work outside your four walls, working with distributors or suppliers, if that um, is the situation you're in. Alex, in particular, talked about the need to work in this tiered distribution network where he, Alex, has to collaborate for revenue planning with 68 bottlers. And I used to always say over my quarter century with the company, it's hard to get two bottlers to agree on anything. All 68 agreed to collaborate with Alex in revenue growth management. That's fantastic. You know, when you're, when you're planning and you get the right thing in the right place at the right time at Absolutely. the right price, um, now you're optimizing and you're creating true value. And I, I think now more than ever, you know, given, given the state of the supply chains, mm -hmm. given the, um, you know, the war for talent, right. uh, getting your arms around that probably has never been more critical. Absolutely. You have to be able to do more with less. Every company has a mandate to grow the top line, to create P&L leverage, to increase operating income. And to get operating leverage or P&L leverage, you've got to grow the top line without bulging in the middle with all your talent. Not that you're necessarily doing digital transformation to lay off people. By the way, Sarah, I don't know if you face that issue at your company, but for the most part, one of the first concerns any one of my team members would talk to me about when I said we were going to implement Anaplan, what will that do for me? Did you ever face that? I, I, I did not, hmm. but I, what I would say is uh, people wanted to get their hands on the platform once it, it kind of had this viral spread okay. of, hey, these are all the things you can do on the platform. Yes. And so what, what, we, what we saw was a, a deep interest in, in wanting to get trained. on. on got it, got it. So I eventually got there. But it took some getting over the fear of, are you trying to replace me? But no, it's about upskilling, reskilling our talent, getting them to see that this is the future of planning. And to be valuable, they've got to get that kind of capability. For sure. Well, I cannot wait to see what Coca-Cola does next.